Kitty. You're next. <laughs> was long overdue because we've had stinky dogs for quite a while now. Last night we were researching the size, the minimum size of a turning circle for a normal vehicle and we were both just baffled at the dimensions <laughs> that we were getting everywhere. It yeah. just seemed enormous. I think they were saying the minimum size to do a kind of three point turn was 14 and a half meters long by about 7.2 meters yeah. wide. Uh, it just seemed huge. So we came down here this morning tape measure in hand and thought we would map it out ourselves and we came to the conclusion that funnily enough the experts were right <laughs> I think if anything we want it bigger we do yeah. than what they said so yeah we mapped it out and we also decided to plan out how the eventual driveway parking area will look so in our mind the end vision is that there will be kind of a gravel border going all the way around the tiny house because we're gonna have a French drain to just make sure we've got really good drainage and the stone doesn't get damp. That border is gonna be a bit wider at the back because we're gonna have a utility area there. And then to the left-hand side of the tiny house is where we're gonna park the two vehicles because there's no windows on this side so you won't be looking at them it won't spoil any view and it's just kind of dead space but we want this to be big enough although we only have one vehicle now we would like to have two vehicles in the future just so we can be a bit more independent with travel and you'll be able to park two vehicles side by side next to the tiny house and then have enough space to back out do a three-point turn and head back up the track that's going to be one of the final things that we do though it's going to almost be like final landscaping yeah but in the meantime we do need a solution to actually be able to turn the van around but we're having a bit of problem figuring it out in our mind the path that it will actually take so we're going to go grab the van yeah. and just do it the old school way and see which way it goes <laughs> good idea Well, that was definitely a worthwhile exercise because we just couldn't wrap our heads around <laughs> no. the way the van was going to move like trying to figure out because the front wheels and the back wheels take different paths it's just really hard to figure out where the actual space will be so it's ended up being about 30 ish square meters is what we would need minimum with then the end of the track on top of it yeah. to uh, actually do a, a sort of really tight three-point turn but that should hopefully allow us to at least get, if we can get deliveries with a truck, like a four by four truck from the builder's merchant, yeah. that would be a big benefit. And then maybe they could at least do get enough volume down here of stuff to make a bigger hard standing so we could get bigger trucks down here in the future. So it's just occurred to me that this 30 meter pad area to turn around in, actually the same footprint as the tiny house. So massive car parking area, tiny little house. So we do have some gravel and some Tuvna left over from when we did the track, but not enough to do that whole pad. So we're gonna try and repurpose and recycle some things that we've been storing on the land for quite some time now. Now, those of you that have been watching the channel since the beginning, uh, you'll probably remember these because when we put the fencing up around the house, these were all just laying around and I had to shift this big pile of them. But there's probably, I don't know, how many would you say? 70-ish, maybe more? It's hard to gauge. 
of like broken roof tiles. Not all of them are broken, but basically they're no good for going on a roof. They're very old. And rather than dispose of them, we thought we'd keep hold of them and we're gonna put them to use down there. So the plan is to smash them up. Then we're gonna chuck them in this cement mixer with some water and hopefully that's gonna round off the edges to make them suitable to be put down for the driveway. That's the theory. Uh, we're not sure how long it's gonna take, but time will tell, so let's crack on. We've got our little tile smashing station set up. We've got the cement mixer. I've put out an old NACA tarp just to smash the tiles up on and minimize the mess. And um, while Ricky's doing that, ferrying tiles and smashing them up, I'm going to make a start on trying to level out the worst dips and grooves on the area that we've marked out. I'm not really sure how smaller pieces I should smash this into, but I think that's small enough. So I'm gonna chuck them in the mixer, get some water in there, put a timer on and we'll see how it pans out. work um, <laughs> I'm not sure how far I'm actually going to go with this how flat I'm going to make it because the more lumps and bumps I'm looking for the more I'm finding right how's it going it's all right yeah I think I'm almost there um, maybe a few more lumps and bumps you'll have to give me your opinion <laughs> yeah it looks pretty level good so it's probably taken me about half an hour to get I don't know maybe half a wheelbarrow <laughs> full of these broken tiles all with rounded edges. I thought it, the thing that was gonna be time consuming was gonna actually be whilst it was in the cement mixer rounding off. That process is actually really quick. It actually takes much longer for me to break the tiles down. So I think once Victoria's leveled this out, I think it's gonna be four hands on deck, just trying to smash as many tiles as possible. But so far, happy with the result. <laughs> Look at all the sludge. <laughs> we are working right beside our IBC tank, but at the moment it's empty and it's not worthwhile filling it up with the pump. So we're just using our trusty water tank that collects rainwater just to fill up a few buckets for this job.
ready? Oh, <laughs> hello. Uh, let's see your goggle eyes. Oh, no. Oh, that's actually not too bad. I thought it was going to be awful. <laughs> <laughs> I can highly recommend anybody who's feeling frustrated or angry, go get yourself a big pile of tiles and whack them for an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, doggies. Down to Bicky. Good morning gang, I've been uh, up and at it early this morning. I'm already one batch of tiles down and I would say I'm probably about halfway through the stack of tiles that we've got. And looking at the turning circle over there, we're probably, yeah, I'd probably estimate that we'll get maybe halfway of filling that just with the tiles alone, which is a result because that's cost us nothing and we've got rid of all those tiles that are just sitting around on the property. So very happy with that. And I think as well, I'll probably have enough gravel and other material uh, left over from doing the track to bring that down and fill out the other half. So if I uh, roll my sleeves up and get at it, hopefully by the end of today, we'll have a finished turning pad. Oh, I have got the afternoon sleepies. Victoria made me this really nice soup for lunch. I just ate so much of it and I'm so full and I'm feeling really drowsy. Also, my optimism for getting this done is disappearing fast because it's just taking longer than I thought it would. You know, I'm always one of these people that is really optimistic about how much I can get done. But the reality is, especially when it's manual jobs like this, you know, things do take time. So I'm not gonna push myself too much. I'm gonna try my hardest to get it done, but we'll see where we get to. I'm gonna keep going. For anyone else out there who has a load of old roof tiles sat around and you think this looks like a good idea for you, just to give you a bit of feedback on what I've learned so far. So. The process is very easy, just time consuming, smashing the tiles up, but once you put it in the cement mixer, that's really simple. And it actually rounds them off really nicely. Obviously we're only using it for infill, so you know the state and the shape of them doesn't really matter too much. The most important thing is just it's rounded off. One thing I would say, we're getting some peculiar shapes with ours because we're using the flat roof tiles that have the lip on the front, they're curved at the front. But if you had the more, traditional tiles where they're quite narrow and they're just rounded uh kind of like an almost semicircle you could get basically you know decorative gravel from that because it just ends up being a flat thing and we've got some of them like that from the flat parts of the tile so it could also be used for decorative as well but yeah overall very happy with how this process has gone and it's really helped a long way to get some of this pad done and we haven't had to buy any more material a little little we haven't had to buy any more materials, which is fantastic. So yeah, I would recommend anybody else out there with tiles sitting around, put them to some use and yeah, recycle them. So just a quick update before I lose all of the light for the day. So I've got the last batch of tiles in the mixer now. They've probably got me, I was pretty much spot on, nearly to the halfway point. Uh, of this pad which is awesome um, but I haven't got around to getting the remaining gravel we've got and trying to bring that down that's going to be a job for a couple of days time because tomorrow Victoria's off and we've got another job that we want to do together so I'm going to pick this back up again in a couple of days and I think what I'm going to do is get the van and now that we've got the track fill as much gravel into the back of the van as I can, drive it down and then shovel it out rather than me being donkey for the day and having to wheelbarrow it up and down. So yeah, I'm gonna go get this last bit of tiling done and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, it is so cold this morning. Ready? One, two, 
I got the blood pump in, getting us nice and warmed up. So we've come down to this bottom end of the property because if you saw our last video, we were talking about doing the fencing. God, I'm a little bit out of breath after doing that. We are looking at taking out a section of a stone wall in order to allow us to get the property fenced. This olive tree is really overgrown. We haven't trimmed up our olive trees yet. And I don't actually know if you can see behind here, but that's the area that we want to work in. So I think it'd be quite beneficial to give it a prune now. What do you reckon, Ricky? Yeah, good idea. This one, <laughs> nearly touching the ground. That is a bit precarious. Well, that was a little bit sketchy because this old ancient ladder snapped as I was part way up it. Luckily though, I've avoided A&E today, which is good. To be fair though, we were never meant to use it for a ladder. It was just lying around. The plan is to reuse this in a greenhouse in the future. So this wire runs the full length of our terrace wall and it has vines growing up it, but it's in the way for where we need to go right now. So we're gonna have to move it. No. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> Heavy. Right. Heavy Where's it, it going? Oh, right. Just put it here, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so in addition to the vines that run all the way up the terrace wall in the property, we actually have a lot of them running right around the perimeter. And although you can't really kind of see them behind me now because they're dormant, they don't have any leaves or fruit on, but in the summer they're quite full and they spread out over quite a large area and we don't want to remove them. So the position of these vines on the walls as well as the trees that are right on the edge of the property played a big part in us deciding where we want our fence line to be. I've just cleaned off the top of this wall because we're going to use some of the stone that we're removing from the terrace wall. Take it and pop it on this back wall just to build it up a little bit. Well, the end is in sight. I would probably say we're about, what do you reckon, two thirds done? Yeah, easily. Easily, Victoria says. So 
yeah, just gonna press on and get this last bit finished. But before we did, I thought I'd better explain to you the reason we're doing this and why we've chosen the line with the fencing that we have. So when we were weighing up uh, how to fence the place, you know, in an ideal world, we've got these lovely granite walls that go all the way around the entire perimeter of the property. And we would love to just have the fence be integrated onto that. That's what lots of people do. You basically cement off all over the top get a nice flat level on the wall and then you basically drill and you put posts into the wall. It means you have a shorter fence post, it means you actually get the fence right up to your border. The issue we've got is that lots of the walls have areas where they're really uneven, parts are broken and basically if we were to do that we'd be looking at rebuilding hundreds upon hundreds of meters of wall cementing all the cross the top of hundreds of meters of walls and to be honest it's just unfeasible we kind of just want to get this done as quickly as possible and just be able to have the fence up property secured and yeah keep moving forward so the options that we had were to either try and get a fence with posts as close to the wall as possible but again that's problematic here because we've got so many trees that just happen to be planted. I don't know whether they've been planted where they've naturally grown there, but they are pressed right up against the wall. And you know, these are really old oak trees and things like that. We're obviously not gonna cut them down for the sake of a fence. So the compromise that we've decided to make is that we are gonna set the fence back about a meter to a meter and a half, depending on the side of the property from the border. And what that will do is that will kind of give a perimeter between this wall and the fence and it will give enough space to make sure you know any type of predators or something can't jump from the wall over the fence but it will also give a wide enough area between the wall and the fence that either we can come down with the strimmer to keep it nice and neat or we can bring the sheep down when we have sheep uh, and just keep an eye on them and they can graze it down it also means we'll have a big enough gap that we can still have the vines grow and harvest the grapes off the vines so it's a bit of a compromise but i think to be honest once the fence is up, the benefits of that fence will far outweigh the cons. And in case you didn't see last week's video where we explained why we're removing this bit of wall, basically this wall goes down the middle of the property and because, like I said, we want to set the fence in about one and a half meters from the back, we want the fence to carry on. So this bit of wall has to go, but it will create a nice little walkway from that side to this side. The sheep will love it, the dogs will love it we'll all love it. <laughs> oh, final one. So that's that job done. Well, I say job done. Most of the job is done. The hardest part of the job, which is moving all the stones. We've slogged it out and done that. But because it's a terrace wall we've taken out, there's a slight difference in the levels of the ground. And at the moment, it's just a bit of a step. So we need to find some soil and fill that in and make a bit of a slope. But I don't know where we're going to find that from because we've used so much soil recently. So I'll have to have a think. But for now, tummies are rumbling and lunch is calling. Nice. Oh, <laughs> love like the zinginess. <laughs> yeah, it's plenty of that. Our neighbour actually gave us a whole bag of lemons the other day, so we thought it was a good excuse to make some lemonade. <laughs> Oh, 
that was infinitely easier. I've probably done about three or four wheelbarrows full there in the van, barely breaking a sweat, which is a very different story to when I was doing it before. And one wheelbarrow was about a 400 meter round trip obviously a lot more time consuming as well as very very taxing on my energy but yeah i'm very happy with that so i reckon probably three or four more trips and that will clear all of the remaining gravel and i think that's going to fill the pad get in just had a thought whilst I was shoveling some of that gravel about what we were discussing yesterday about putting the fence on top of the uh, stone wall but you know the stone wall is a real state and we'd have to build up so much so that made it not feasible for us to do but one thought that just never crossed my mind and I'm pretty sure it's not crossed Victoria's either because she's never said it is that instead of building the wall up we could just take the wall down to the lowest point and level it off there that seems like a much easier and quicker option. So potentially that's something else to consider. So I'll take that one to Victoria and see what she thinks. <sighs> so there we have it, job done. I'm just retiring to the back of the van because the wind has really picked up. But yeah, that's it, completely done. Now we can get vehicles down here, we can turn the van around. We'll be able to have deliveries from the builder's merchant in smaller trucks, which will be perfect. It's not really suitable for big chunky trucks yet. We'll have to look at extending that for that. But overall, this is a really big improvement and I'm very, very happy with how it's turned out. We actually had quite a bit of the sort of Tuvna left over. Uh, so I actually chucked a load of that as well, just over the tiles to infill around the tiles, but also because it just now makes the pad sort of look more one color not necessary it's only a functional thing but still it's nice either way and some exciting news for you we have finally settled on a name that we're both happy with a new name for the channel now that victoria is more involved something that's a bit more inclusive not just liked by ricky because it's now both of us in every video so we're going to be putting out a short little video uh, earlier on in the week just announcing it so people know that it's happening if they haven't seen this video and then next week all being well that video should have the new channel name on. So I really hope you like it. If you think you can guess what it is, put it in the comments, but I don't think anybody is gonna guess this. I'll be very impressed if you guess it, but yeah, really hope you like it and we'll see you next week.